you could see the change that he had in her because, you know, she, she'd been to bed with Michael Hutchins, like, oh, 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 what a feeling, you know. And I think he taught her, he probably taught her um, that life's too short to be subtle. I remember at one point thinking that Kylie would have the bubble perm forever. It seemed a permanent thing on her head, but there was no doubt that the Hutchins period, she appeared ravished. She'd been, you know, well and truly shagged. Lust was now a part of her life. Michael was SX, S-E-X, you know, capital letters, there's no doubt about that. I mean, wildly experimental. Um, I think the last thing Michael ever thought about was having sex in the missionary position. I always think it was something out, out, out there. She was a little bit more serious, there was less bubble gum, less cheesy grins, and she was oozing something that only a woman that um, is kind of exploring herself in lots of different ways can have. Paula says that he's a good lover, is it true? <laughs> He has any singlet that can please women who <laughs> want to know. <laughs> oh, what does no, it mean? That no, no, it doesn't answer? mean no, it means... Yeah, well, yes, he is. I just know Michael was almost like uh, exhausted from it. But one, one of them bought the other a pair of rhinestone handcuffs. Say no more. Not the sort of normal present one buys one's other half, is it? They bought me an electric razor, which wasn't quite as exciting, was it? Each man should teach you something different. But I'd imagine that it would include um, locations, um, places to do it, ways to do it. They were flying on Qantas, and uh, they were in first class, and Lord Kylie climbed on top of Michael. <coughs> and she um, uh, had uh, um, relationships with him on the seat. And Michael said, as he was sitting in, the, in his seat, he saw Bob Hawke a couple of rows in front. Bob Hawke looked at, back at them shagging and went, hey. Qantas Connections. It works a wonder down under. Sex and rock and roll. It seems there was only one of the unholy trinity missing. She hadn't done any drugs until she met Michael Hutchins. Michael Hutchins opened up the cupboard door for ecstasy. <laughs> She loved the ecstasy thing because who didn't at that time? And it was kind of like, Michael was there, you know, that dangling everything around. And uh, I was told by Michael it was liquid ecstasy. It's really pure and it's amazing. And, and um, they were out taking this walk. Kylie's version was I was sniffing a flower and it's beautiful. Michael's picture was that he saw a man putting a gun up in his sight and aiming it in Kylie's direction. I don't think she was even really aware of what had happened, but she, the flower disintegrated in front of her just like that, in front of her face. Ecstasy was the only drug that Carly ever admitted to using, which is something she didn't have in common with Frank Boff. Well, let's see a little clip from the uh, uh, A Step Back in Time. Here it is. It'll remind one or two people of where they were. Step Back in Time was um, one of those songs. You know, there are various ways you can crack a problem. When you can't find a a, a rhythm to dance to, and you can't find a, a piece of music that you like to get up on in a just kind of a good dance to, you've got to step back in time and go and pick up the old ones, which is what everybody still does. Everybody keeps going back, plundering the past. Uh, obviously back then we were going back to the 70s. All of definitely a song that I love listening to when I'm getting ready. Even now, even now, you know, even, even though it was done a long time ago, you hear it now and it's still one of those songs that makes you feel great. The whole step back in time, she was very clear about what she wanted on that. She, it, was a, it was a homage to uh, 70s disco. And, she didn't have any say in the record covers or her videos up until that point. And, and I think that, again, Michael gave her the strength to say, fuck you to these people, you're an artist, you've got your own decisions. So she had a well of stuff in her head. Look, girl, you've got this, you've got that, you're fantastic looking, you can sing, you've got a career. Take control of it, take control of yourself. And it worked. Carly might have been controlling her image, but songs like Word Is Out were still immediately recognisable as the high-tempo pop work of PWL. But a change was about to come. She saw that she was going to have to have a longer career than she had to do those things because no one can remain the sweet ingenue forever. And she saw that better than the men around her. 
and I think that's why she's still with us. Kylie's contract with PWL ran out in 1992. She didn't renew it. She clearly made a decision there that something was important if, if she wanted to last into a, even her 30s. You know, I mean, it's, it's a terrible thing. She was only in her mid-20s or something like that, and she was obviously feeling slightly patronised that, 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 that you know, what she was doing was a little bit silly and a little bit girly, and it was doomed to death. So obviously she, she needed to make moves. And there's no doubt that I think for her it gave her a sense of grace about her own uh, position in the pop world, that, that she had her own identity and she had her own individuality and she could control things. The newly independent Kylie had also drifted apart from the man who played a very central role in her reinvention. Because I really believe this, and I'm, I'm saying this in all sincerity, that actually of all the girlfriends Michael had, I actually thought she was the best one. Michael Hutchins died in 1997. He was a pivotal figure in her life. He was the person who took her into being a woman in more ways than one, not just sexually, but intellectually, psychologically, artistically, without a shadow of a doubt. Um, but when he died, she was, like many others, completely devastated, and it was almost as if she was still with him. And of course, she has said many times since that she feels that he's shining down on her and smiling on her.